is fantastic. This is GT racing right now. He's got traction. He's got rhythm. He's got both of them. Maloney. Oh, oh, he's taking like an Anderson. Anderson's up the oh, hill. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my goodness. Half the field's going to get rolled. Six very close. These guys are one I want to make their way through the field very quickly. This is it! This is over! I can't believe this! Oh my god! God, what?! This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. Roll Tide, people. We are in Alabama country. We are in lead, and this is a track which many people say is very, very underrated. Often found on the IndyCar calendar, and a track which really does test every single aspect of a vehicle. We're at Barber Motorsports Park, of course, creation place of the Skip Barber for this. The Parramatta Suzu AOS action. And of course, it's the really, really short racing that we are seeing today because this is the 6060, which is so, so revered in this series here on the Irish Racing Esports Network, brought to you, presented by Simspeed TV. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone around the world. It's Jake Sperry here in the country box, joined alongside by Ross Rizzo as qualifying is currently underway, 20 minutes open get this all correct around the spider web here barber mode sports park ross currently at the top of the standings though you can't look past a certain team that team tried to do their level best they got pole at bathurst it is of course the logitech g alt esport boys one two and it's their red bull paramount driver of course dane warren at the top yeah hello everyone we have welcome to aosc so front row lockup for the Altus boys they'll be pretty pleased with that after what was a very heartbreaking um uh, Bathurst 1000 campaign as they both improve by the tune of about a tenth each so now they're about two tenths clear of the field so a little bit of redemption from what was the disappointing 1000 but excellent start to their session for the Altus boys Dane Warren and JSH I tell you what someone who's had a very impressive qualifying lap time that many people wouldn't expect is Ruben Goodall in the 20 he's been knocking on the door saying I've got a good turn of pace first real strong run that we've seen from him in the uh, Omen car there of course the zero esports car he's up to seventh position on a 124.3 which is only get this a few hundreds ahead of the championship leader in fact a tenth ahead of the championship leader marlon mcmullen a few seconds behind there in uh ahead of uh harley haber who's sick as jordan ross has just moved up to third position on a 124 flat worth saying track conditions mostly cloudy 34 degrees here in alabama it's a cool track it's going to see quick times and track temperature cooling going in uh, quicker and quicker. Brett Loxton improves up into fourth position. All these times are so important, so crucial. Who's going to be the last man out after 20 minutes may decide qualifying. Yeah, it makes for a really exciting session. We are familiar with sessions being decided within the first five minutes because of the, the track getting an insane amount of um, heat built into it from the large number of track uh, cars out on track but if the track temps are cool and there's a potential for it to cool even further then we're going to see action all the way through and this is a tight this is a very tight action-packed track where a lot can go wrong in a lap so it can be so you can pick up little mistakes um little losses of time so getting an extra couple of runs is a very very beneficial and someone who's not going to get that time is Jared Philsell, who bins it out of the final corner. Had a poor showing to start his season off in the E-Series. He was uh, down in the points. And this is, again, something that I think Jared Philsell uh, is struggling with at the moment. And that is how he approaches a race. 
I think Jared is the best driver in the world when it comes to these Australian touring cars if he has the time to practice. You put him cold, you ice him out onto the track, there's no guarantees that he'll be the quickest driver in the world, Ross. I mean, it, it's still being a bit a bit cruel. He's had the Porsche Super Cup to, to worry about. Um, and, you know, um, he still picked up a win. I mean, uh, we can't forget that. He picked up a win at the Monza uh, round of that series. But we saw Vintage Madison as well that, uh, uh, that evening. So he was going to be hard to stop. But, you know... Same, same with Josh as well. He wasn't quite knocking on the door of the wins, but still there, still early in the in the series. But um, I'm surprised uh, Jared's not put a time on the board as yet. But I'm sure that you'll change that pretty quickly. We also know that Jake Maloney has not set a lap time, but he likes to go from last to wherever, and that's going to be crucial for him over the course of a 15-lap race coming up because uh, the top 25 get inverted for their grid position, and that's going to be very key with how this race is going to be run here today because you find yourself on the leading lap inside the top 25 you've got a good chance in that second race of being right up there through the field and let's talk about this field and how good it is because you've got drivers like jack boyd and jane mcknight only on the eighth row of the grid at the moment stephen vargas back in 20th currently 25th held by david kinman with michael talianchis just in front of him big names down the order on the outside looking in an even bigger name michael barron yeah, well, like I said, it's um. So we're about halfway through the session now, and it can take a little while to get to get the right lap on this track, being as difficult as it is. But impressed with the times that we've seen in the top ten so far. Going to point out good old Bo Albert, who snuck into ninth place. He's in the pits at the moment, but I'm pretty sure he'll want to see if he can find another half a tenth to put himself ahead of the championship leader. I'm pretty sure he does, and he says himself, I'm not a good driver when it comes to this vehicle, but he also said, contradictory to that, is that he's starting to find his pace, he's starting to find his mojo once again, continuing to find that good run. Your top ten are like this, it's Dane Warren, Jackson Susan Harlow, Jordan Ross, Brett Loxton, Andrew Gilliam, as well as the next five, Harley Haber, Ruben Goodall, Marlon McMullen, Bo Albert and Kyle Stokes, rounding out the top ten. On the outside looking in, a couple of hyperdrive cars of Jamie Stovold and Tom Freer, they want in on the action. Splitting them is the care of the driver's seat driver, there, Sean Thompson, in 12th position, having a very, very good qualifying by his stance on a 24-7, almost a second off the pole position. But for Sean Thompson, second off the best in the world, you'll take that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think Jamie Stovold will take that as well. Typically... We saw at Cota, Tom Freer had an unbelievably good race. Fantastic pace, fighting back from hardship, while Jamie Stovall had very much the role of the B driver. He's only one spot behind him, which um, I'm sure it would take a lot of confidence out of that. So it looks like Jamie's connected well with the track. Tom, we typically see, um, is a bit quicker, so probably still trying to um, get up to pace. But, um, you know, Sean as well doing a really solid job there in the top 15. And Christian Smart also of late. Uh, has been a bit quiet, will be pleased with the top 15, and currently showing up his much fa regularly much faster teammate, Jack Boyd. So, wondering when he's going to fire a few more shots. Well, we'll see how quick that he's going to go over the next couple of laps. Worth noting that Michael Barron has moved up into 8th position, as Rob Bowden has gone up to 24th, which means now Cam Dance is on magical place 25. He likes making up places in races, and Taliancic, Kidman, and Zeitinger all on uh, that outside looking as they go through as we got drivers out there on a lap look to try and push at a level which they can be very comfortable with jared philsell of course is one of them at the moment he's looking to get his lap time sorted currently going himself uh, all the way through towards this fantastic uh s's section on the brakes through the right and go down the hill over the curb and you've got this big long parabolic right hander which sets you up for the back half of the lap which is the quick bit the really really aggressive bit and of course we haven't seen any chimes from phil cell yet we are expecting to get them as he pushes very hard through that opening chicane next chicane comes up for him then flicks it through the left right once more and it's this big uphill which is so deceptive ross yeah and then this really really long double apex right hander is just constant turning 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 still turning still turning still dancing it on the brakes hoping not to lock up then clip the apex on uh, the curb on the right open up uh, the final corner of the left squeeze on the power difficult to get the traction down and fire it across the line where does that put jared philsell it puts oh not very pleasant at all so we'll have another run at that 
he will 130.8 so uh, that very much a banker lap so to speak so Phil still will have to go at it once again currently Andrew Gilliam out there on a flyer at the moment cross the line he goes and he will uh, find himself on a 24-2 but does not improve because the lap time was not valid in the end for him so he knows he's got the pace he's just got to find himself a little bit quicker overall if he is to try and get himself out there proving exactly what he is capable of so we'll see how those times are looking at the moment drivers that are surprising at the moment i would say robert hooper in the 014 here ross he's in 17th place at the moment but scratch that one because scott o'keefe has gone sixth what a time wow where did that come from that's phenomenal from scott o'keefe so the the top GRM driver at the, at the moment, from what I can tell by by some margin as well, over who would be Christian Smart and Jack Boyd. That's that's phenomenal to see. Well done, Scott. Well, uh, you have to say, Barber brings it out in drivers you do not expect. So I think Scott O'Keefe has found a track that he is very, very comfortable with. And a few names in that top 10 you would not expect. Marlon McMullen, in the ever the consistent, hard into the wall. His lap is abandoned, and he will have five minutes to make sure that he gets it back as Jared Filsell moves up to third position on a 124 flat. So now it's an all Altus front row, an all ERT second row, and then third row is a mixture of Petute and Zuva, which is fantastic to see out there on track. It does bump the championship leader to 10th at the moment in qualifying, which we do know here, Ross, is not his strong point. But yeah, but he does have a few races to make um, to make a, a couple of inroads. The consistency will probably help him over the two races, but there is an interesting uh, amount of strategy to play out over what is just a six, two 60-kilometer races. Of course, uh, you have to take a pit stop in one or of the two races. And the they second abolished race. that. Oh, they abolished it. Okay, my, my bad then. But yes, yeah, so the reverse so the reverse grid um, race for race two, which I understand is still uh, in effect. Um, so... If he's not qualified so well and make his way forward or drops back, he can put his way, uh, make his way, uh, sorry, start from a decent spot in the front, uh, sorry, in the second race. Yeah, he will need to find a way back if he doesn't have a good opening race. Jordan Ross does not improve on his lap time. He was a few hundred slower, but the track is starting to heat up slightly. It's gained a degree because the cloud cover out on track has fallen away right at the pointy end of the session, which makes finding a bit of time even more difficult as they go out and get themselves those final laps in those final few improvements they so desperately need to find and currently the man on the bubble still stands to be cameron dance but drivers like luke page and wayne taylor have found times where the likes of tally Atch, exciting and kinmond all find themselves now around position 30 out on track not ideal for them and wanting to make those moves get inside the top 25 they will need some good results for them Damien Johnstone though goes into P16 and bumps Martin Boyd down the order a little bit more so right now there is a big contingency of gone rogue vehicles around row seven sorry row eight and row nine and there's a very small gap between 14th and 18th of just less than a tenth of a second and then add a little bit longer and we can add another tenth of that and we can add another five six cars Actually, almost seven or eight. Um, so that battle, that uh, qualifying battle from 14th down to just outside the top 20, um, we'll probably see a lot of jostling in the final two and a half minutes, just as they find those extra fractions of a second. Uh, those extra fractions could be massive. Remember, at the end of 20 minutes, you are allowed to finish your lap. So everyone got to go out there and get the time that they need. Andrew Gilliam has not really found too much in terms of improvement, but he rounds the final corner, looking to try and get himself over the line, see what he is capable of doing, and we will see it's an outlap, so he'll now go on to his flying lap this time and look to try and get it in, and he only has two opportunities get that one going as we keep on looking at who is on some good lap times at the moment 75 phil cell at the moment though in the 22 machine normally seen with a big number one at the moment which is currently held by marlon mcmullen the champion from last season through consistency again and he is ragging his way through these exit sections with a minute and a half to go he needs a good lap time he needs a good tenth and a little bit to get himself up to pole 
Yeah, he certainly does. He looks like he's pushing quite hard. Probably struggling a little bit. Again, this huge, really long right-hander. right, right -hander. He's been on the grass a couple of times, um, really pushing the extent of the track, which is very easy to pick up a 1x, very easy to overshoot those the S's that he came through before where it looked pretty wild. Onto the main straight he goes on a 24-0-2-2. Does he find any improvement? Again, no, no time for Jared. I've also noticed he's probably picked up the most incident Same. points as well so he's really struggling out there by the look of things just keeping it on the road well harley haber needs to find some time he's only got one position that one being reuben goodall in the omen car which is not going to be helpful for him in terms of who he's fighting around in the team's championship as well here's haber across the line needs to improve 24 5 he doesn't so now he needs to go out there and put a big lap time in he can't he abandons it he will go no higher than eighth position the main challenger to the crowd at the moment he held over 100 points in terms of a lead and in two races he's seen that slip to a deficit of 10 at the moment sorry a deficit of 20 not ideal at all here's jackson susan harlow jsh will make the push to the line and we'll see if he can find half a tenth of a second no he can't 23 999 call the police in the united kingdom he cannot find it and he has one opportunity left as time is going to expire in four seconds who's going to be over the line last is robert hooper going to get the time in no he is not so that's going to be crucial for him he will not find any improvement jack boyd though we focus across the line 30 24 7 he finds he moves up to the seventh row in 14th position crucial in terms of what he was looking for in terms of a time overall zeitinger will not find improvements nor will wayne pengilly who goes Fred Eagle everywhere, looking to try and find a bit of improvement. Keep focus on David Kinman, though, at the moment. He's down in 31st position and struggling for this section. Goodbye, he's off the track. That is day done. Jamie McKnight currently scored in 20th position on the 24-9. He was looking really strong earlier on. He's only a second off the pole position, but one second splits you 20 places. So you've got to make sure that those times are in good. A couple of tenths of a second gets him up onto the seventh row. Has he found anything in this final run through to the line? Jamie McKnight in the 027, 125 flat. He's short. He's short. He's short. He is short. Brett Loxton, though, currently in fifth place. Does a 24 flat. He gets time, but not position. Very, very crucial in terms of what he was looking for. Simon Vela will be the last one to make a run to the line. And Vela finds himself with a 25-6. No improvement. This is how the grid stacks up for the first race of the night at Barber. So it's old to see sports who lock the front row. Dane Warren and Jackson Susan Harlow at the front. Jared Philsell starts from third. Oh, Jordan Ross in fourth for Evolution Racing Team. Jordan Ross, the only two-time winner this season. Brett Locks starts from fifth with Andrew Gilliam. Sixth place overall. Seventh, we'll see Scott O'Keefe and Harley Haber. Ruben Goodall, a good qualifying from him in ninth with Marlon McMullen rounding out the top ten. Starting from 11th is the triple eight of Kyle Stokes and then the zero six of Bo Albert Sh sells himself short a lot quite often in this car, but I think he'll be pretty, pretty good to watch in this race. Tom Freer, perennial good qualifier, th only 13th for him today. Jack Boyd in 14th, then Sean Thompson in 15th. Steve Jansen, a quiet session into 16th. Jamie Stovold, impressively in 17th. Damien Johnston in 18th. Christian Smart, 19th. And Jamie McKnight just sneaking into the 20. Robert Hooper and Michael Barron lock row 11. Row 12, we'll see Michael Taliancic, and Stephen Varga. The man on the bubble is Guy Leach in the 46th with Cam Dance and Luke Page. Uh, 26th and 27th, 28th, Dwayne Taylor. 29th, Rob Bowden. 30th goes to Adam Zeitig. 31st, a rather disappointing session for David Kinman, followed by Michael Spithill and then Gavin Cox. Wayne Pengley out of 34th. Rob Harris, 35th. The driving meme himself, Simon Mazomo in 36th. Then Scott Gamble, who should be streaming on Facebook tonight, should be an interesting watch from 37th. Simon Vella in 38th. Then Jacob Knight, all the way down in 39th. We're not used to seeing him that far back. He'll be interesting to watch. And then Matthew Norrie Norris out of 40th. Jonathan Ben, Jared Tipso, a Tapsel even, Chris Barnes, Mark Dial, Anton Green and Jake Maloney make the 46th that will take starting grid with only 15 instant points here in the 15 laps that they've got they've got to make sure that they are driving as clean as they can but there are surprises in this top 10 scott o'keefe had a worldly of a qualifying and he'll be looking to try and advance on that 
in this race. What about the championship contenders on rows four and five? Haber and McMullen. Don't count out Jordan Ross. He's had a great rich vein of form, and he'll be looking to gather that in the way that he couldn't do for his championship last season. We'll see what the 143 is capable of doing this time out. But they have two minutes to get gridded up, or they start from that place known as Pit Road. And, of course, this is a very interesting start of this race. Of course, you've got that big left to turn one and the big 270-degree China-style, Shanghai circuit-style right-hand bend up and down the hill, which is always going to be a test on those tyres. But there is so much at stake. There is also form at stake for an E-series of the like, which is what some drivers are trying to gain some exposure for, try and learn, try and get better at. But, of course, everyone fighting for their own championships. Two minutes then. Up on the grid. Lights on. On top of the Iris and Gantry. 15 laps at Barber Motorsports Park. Start. Right now, it's a long way to the slow start from Jackson Susan Harlow. Phil Sell's got a stormer off the line as he already jumps the position. Did he jump the start? I don't think he did as he moves up through into second as they file themselves through the opening section. All nice and dandy at the moment. And Loxton makes a mistake and already drops the position. And now Haber going to go around the outside of himself and O'Keefe to get the move done. And there's also a uh, move from Bo Albert as he gets the tap on Goodall. McMullen now going to try and go to the inside of the championship. And Phil Sell down the inside for the race lead and he goes way too deep on the brakes and it will lose them to both Altus cars at the moment a lightning start as Phil Sell tries to defend oh they were going three wide into the head and they're still three wide in the run up run up to the S's so Bo, Bo Albert Marlon McMullen is going to file in behind Ruben Goodall they're still too wide uh, Bo Albert St Carl Stokes and Tom Freer bold move on the inside he's barely going to pull that up in time I think there might have been contact with Stokes but they might just get away with that but that could have been very, very bad for those guys. So, Dane Warren starting to uh, st starting to get into everything with Jared chasing him down. It, J um, JSH filing behind, and then part two of the Bathurst 1000 success. Jordan Ross, uh, oh, getting a bit taily in fourth place. Tail happy there, heading through turn number 14 or 13 into 14. This is 15 now out on track, and then the final corner, turn 16 that they hit, and they get back onto the start, and that's one lap of 15. Already score complete as down the inside a little bit further back. That is going to be Sean Thompson through on Janssen to make the move. So that's very, very comfortable. But this opening lap, really, really aggressive in the early stages. Keep an eye out on Harley Haber. He's on the back of Andrew Gilliam here in sixth position. Gained two off the start. The biggest gainer inside of your top ten. The biggest loser who lost two positions was Brett Lock. He's got to try and find a way back into this one. But Mullen has gone absolutely nowhere off this start. Not ideal at all. He looks down the inside, as Haber does as well on Gillian. Where are you trying to make that move, son? He can't get it done down on that inside. He was over the grass. The door was firmly left shut there. And I think that was unfairly shut potentially there from Andrew Gilliam. He did not give a lane there to Harley on the inside who was looking. Yeah, and now he's got damage to show for it. So, yeah, a, a bit cheeky for, for Gilliam there. Um, Marlon starting to starting to get into the groove, I think, trying to get racing. Oh, he's picked up some damage as well, I've just seen. So, uh, a bit difficult for the championship contenders. But if your name is Jordan Ross, you're pretty happy at the moment. Might be able to pick up a couple of sneaky points and get back into contention. But look at the lead. Look at the lead that uh, Dane Warren has pulled out now. Fantastic as we get an eye out on what's happened to the Gone Rogue 099 of Christian Smart. So he's trying to make his way through this section. There's a hyperdrive car on the outside as they head into the S's. And oh, two into one. Never, never going to be good as Christian Smart gets the turnaround and has a long, long way back in this race to get to the magical 25th position, which is still, I think, currently being held by Guy Leach, who's gone absolutely nowhere in this race. Potentially, potentially not. In fact, he will gain a position overall, which means Luke Page would currently take the pole position if things would stay like this. 1.4 seconds, though, for Dane Warren at the front of the field. He has checked out at the moment, and it is very clear that he has checked out. And Haber gives some payback there to Andrew Gilliam, and Gilliam's going to turn him around, and that is really not what Harley Haber wanted there. And that, I think, is two drivers just absolutely losing their cool with each other. And Nick Hausler is going to have to have a serious word with those two because they're playing as if it's the kids in the playground and as if they're playing slap seat. Um, I'm a bit disappointed with Andrew there. He has been pretty aggressive of late, but he's not fighting for a championship like Haber is. But look, if he was provoked or not, it's still, still a bit silly. But you know who is happy to see that? 
good old Marlon McMullen. He picks up a couple of free spots and is now looking much better in the championship fight for this race. Yeah, he certainly is. And where Harley Haber is now is behind. Uh, Cam Dance, I do believe it is, down the inside. He goes and he takes the position away. So he's going to be in great position for this second race of the night, which I think is where he's going to get his point. But for the time being, Jack's... And Harlow trying to stay with Jared Philsell in the battle for second place overall as they make their way into turn two, uh, turn one, and now the big long turn two, three, four, etc. This is allowed Scott O'Keefe inside the top five and talk about great runs. Scott O'Keefe is going to be in absolute wonderland at the moment as behind Goodall tries to fend off Bo Albert here through this section. It's all right handers but up the hill some good battling overall as Brett Loxton now thinks about the inside here on Andrew Gilliam. He gets down the inside and Gilliam a lot nicer trying to go for the up and under and what an up and under that is. They're going to battle all the way to 7-8-9. Oh no there's contact and just about keeps it on, on the road. Gilliam is, is fighting with a damaged car right now. You can see it, he's oh, on he it. 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 Oh, that, that's a bit, that's very, that's that's not cool from Brett there at all, but uh, this is getting very, very ugly. And once again, good on Marlon McMullen, profits from this aggression. Wow, so Mar so there's the slow down penalty coming in for Brett Loxton as well. So he will drop back a position that really checks up Bo Albert and Kyle Stokes, as well as Jack Boyd now, who gets on the rear, this mid pack. I think Andrew Gilliam has made a friend with absolutely everyone as there's Loxton going wide. He's completely lost his call. Cool. There's two positions. There's a third position that's going to go as well. Brett Loxton in all sorts of uh, out of shape. He won the opening round of the season at Gilles Villeneuve. But I think I've just lost a little bit of respect there for Brett Loxton after doing that because even though he's gone up and under as Andrew Gilliam, there's no reason why you should send just like that and have a massive crash and incident. If that was in the real world, you'd get a serious telling off. Um, I want to give him benefit of the doubt that he missed his braking marker, but he's too experienced for that. Well, he, regardless, he needs to salvage his race by at least staying in the top 25. Marlon now sizing up a move on Andrew Gilliam, whose car must be absolutely awful right now. To the inside at the hairpin, Gilliam not fighting back for once. McMullen barely pulls it up, and there's another shunt from Andrew Gilliam. McMullen can't, get on the, can't quite get on the power up that hill. Very difficult to get the power down when you overshoot like that. And an apology coming in from Marlon McMullen said, I didn't mean to make contact with you. And Gilliam acknowledges that as they go forward. See, that's how gentlemen drive, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you should race there if you're Marlon McMullen. So big props to him in terms of the way he's going. That train goes all the way back to Jamie Stovold. And through all that battling, Michael Talianchich is under pressure at the moment from Harley Haber for 19th place. That's good crucial the longer that this race goes on battle for second still on and there's the mistake coming in from jared philsell as he's left the door open for jackson suits and harlow they'll fight all the way to the final corner always favoring philsell but look at that suits and harlow no room on the outside he's been fed the door by philsell who says no sir i am the phenom you are the upstart at 16. look like uh jsh was lining up a decent uh move on the outside there it looked like he's just getting on the power and jared could see the overlap coming and he just didn't let him have it so i'm not a particularly big fan of that move from jared but he <laughs> there's a reason he's what he's one of the best in this series right now um looking back at uh for the top five scott o'keefe has kept his nose clean so he'll be looking good for, to bring home a top five while marlon has another has another look at andrew gilliam not close enough this time but it looks like it's just going to be a matter of time Gilliam still struggling but looking like he's a little bit more comfortable this time around look at um, Bo Albert on the outside of Ruben Goodall won't quite get the traction there but a bit of a warning shot Oh, there's an incident in the background there. We've just caught that. West End Mazda instant replay up on screen. It's Sean Thompson. He'd lost three positions through turn two. So you can see he's trying to get the power back down. That's Hooper on the inside of him. Makes one little bit of contact. And there's Stovall just behind as well. So they get themselves through that section. And he's caught on the outside. He's caught the grass. And round you go, Sean Thompson. A big, big hit back onto the racing track. And he's done well to avoid any further contact. That point onwards. Very very crucial in terms of that but we still have those battles and let's not forget here ladies and gentlemen that we are at the halfway stage of this race already at this point in time as there are battles going on up and down this field the top 25 round out currently by luke page you keep an eye on him because he's under pressure from varga at the moment in the uh 
in the very nice Mark 1 livery there. And I'm not going to listen to Josh. No, I can say that he's a trash tier driver because I don't think he is. But Steven Varga, very much on the outside looking in, needs to make the move in the next seven laps or so. Or hope somebody has a big one again. Yeah, I saw on the lap prior, Michael Barron did make a mistake, so it did check this field up just a little bit. It's given Varga a bit of an incentive to attack Luke Page, while disappointingly for Kinman, he's just dropping back. So looking to go defensive into the hairpin, can't quite do it. Oh, look at the rear lock from Page. Oh, it's going to be a half move, half defensive. He's sideways into the, into the hairpin. Great traction off the inside for Varga, but won't be able to round him up into the S's, so we have to try again. But he's, going, he's defending clear air here is Luke Page. This is just going to leave him open. Oh, and he's locked up rears again, and it's just... Oh, no, oh, no that, that's turned. ended in disaster. It has, it has, and Luke Page gets turned around, and I think that was a case of Indiana Jones and defender of the lost corner a bit there from Luke Page. There was no way that he was ever going to get the move. He invited the door open, and he had to take a much more shallower line, chopping off the nose. Varga, I don't think, had many places to go at that point. And just like that, his top 25 has fallen away. That moves up Varga into 23rd. Uh, and Kinland, actually, inside the top 25. So keep an eye on Ruben Goodall at the moment here. He's under pressure from Bo Albert still. And Bo has been looking everywhere here to try and make this move. Half mistake into turn one. No grass there from Goodall. But again, nice and neat, nice and narrow. But has he left just half a door open at this stage? Can he go through on the inside? He's going to try every which way, but it's the outside at turn five, which makes life difficult. And keep an eye on Triple Eight. Kyle Stokes might want in on this. He breaks a little early there after the incident that's happened. And there, Goodall, again, trying to defend it. But look at Bo around the outside, trying to make it work. He's got the inside now for the big 789 complex coming up, which is an absolutely beautiful stretch of track. We'll see if Bo's got it on the inside. Goodall's got to defend this. Kyle Stokes trying to find a way through. He won't find it. They both go a little bit wide. And oh, no, there's a half turn. And they get going. And the concertina continues. Yeah, I was going to say, we've seen too many incidents into this corner already to call that one well and done. But Bo, a nice move on the outside to get that one done. Now we'll hope to check out of Ruben Goodall with Kyle, with uh, Jack Boyd having a look at the now struggling, well, um, slightly checked up Kyle Stokes. Stokes looks like he's back under underway now. Well, look at the hyperdrive car with Tom Freer with Brett Loxton after that earlier scuffle. Would be keen to get back into the top 10, but might not have the car under him all the time to be able to do it. He runs wide, tries to get the late apex coming back onto the main straight or oh, understeers badly in the mid corner there. So it looks like that Zuba car starting to struggle. They are starting to struggle on how much damage is there for Brett Loxton after that big hit. He's got a huge bit of damage on that front right so that's not going to be helping too much uh, as he goes forward his front left sorry so to speak so that won't be helping at all Scott O'Keefe under pressure though for the top five at the moment this is Andrew Gilliam trying to get back into context and back into battling that last lap by took six tenths of a second out of the gone rogue driver so O'Keefe doesn't have the pace to run away here but he does have defending smarts and if he defends hard enough here with Andrew Gilliam he'll bring McMullen into play and that's what he wants he wants the two cars behind to battle so he has an ability to stretch a second as he has time to replay up on screen brought to you by West End Mads so we got Kyle Stokes in this in this replay. So he's lost a couple of spots down at the hairpin potentially. So oh, big big lockup. Oh, he, did he collect another card? No, no he's done he well. did a great job to save that one. Well done to Kyle on that, but he will be licking his wounds a little bit there. Just noticing the battle for 25th starting to heat up. David Kinman, who currently holds the spot, having with a lot of damage at the moment. So he'll be down on handling and straight line speed. There isn't much, many straights to talk about here, but I think Adam Zeitinger smells blood in the water. Oh, and there's a wide line taken behind that. Wayne Pengilly, famous for his Bathurst escapade a year ago. He'll want to try and make sure that he gets himself in that magical top 25 spot or hope that some drivers run into issues. Some drivers who are pulling away now. Harley Haber, he's trying to get to Stovall between now and the end of this race. Get as many points as can at the moment here. Trying to battle hard, trying to gain those positions, but ultimately no dice. Michael Taniancic under pressure again. Robert Hooper this time trying to want to get himself through. He's getting no luck of things at the moment as he tries to push on forward this train, which effectively is going to determine who gets a magical top 25 and who doesn't. And now we have um, Wayne Pengley going to the inside of Adam Zeiting. Oh, the, the 138 is off. So 
Michael Barron has thrown away 24th place, a provisional second, sorry, provisional front row, and will have to do all this work again. He will, and on the brakes, he went into that section. He just missed his point, I think. Got a big, big wiggle there on the rear axle and had to try and save it. So he comes up the hill here on this West End Mazda replay. And now he's looking at this one on the brakes. And I don't think he's hit the brakes well enough at all. You see, he gets on the top of the crest. Uh, the rear locks up, and he's now trying to save it. He's done well to keep it out of the barriers. But now he's behind Michael Spithill, 29th place. So that puts Zeitinger up in the top 25. Wayne Pengilly now on the outside looking in, wanting to make those moves. As just in front, Jamie McKnight gets under pressure from Guy Leach, who can't find a way through just yet. So some good scrapping then going on from these drivers as they look to try and continue on their scraps. For second, though, it's still on Jared Philsell. Five seconds behind Dane Warren now, but Jackson Susan Harlow, the young 16-year-old, the youngest Scrops winner ever, is still in that range to go and pounce. He's only half a second back. He can go and take it to the walking shore, man. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure he'll, he'll have a few things to, to prove to the to the phenom himself. He's looking a little bit more comfortable at this stage. Um, if not, if he doesn't get him, he'll have obviously an advantage starting a position ahead of him for race two. So either way, um, looking pretty good for JSH, but it's certainly looking amazing for Dane Warren. Nearly checked out to the tune of five seconds. Great drive from Dane so far. Yeah, fantastic drive from Dane Warren. He's showing that he's got pace, knows how to use it out on track. So he will be trying to gain as much as he possibly can in the final few laps of this race. We've got four laps to go at the line and a few battles that we're seeing here. Bo Albert's finally got through on Ruben Goodall, which is crucial for what he was looking for. He's up there in eighth place and he'll be absolutely on, on hot coals going to see how happy he is. Jack Boyd, though, he's under pressure. Tom Freer has stayed with him the entirety of the way. This is the battle for the last spot inside of the top 10. And I think Tom Freer wants to go out there, get aggressive, and make that one last move. One position, all they want, a few drivers in this field will be content where they are for the start of the second race. Yeah, you're in a late stage of the race where you've got a lot more to lose than you do to gain. If you do punt the car in front or spin out yourself, you potentially lose um, getting the benefit of the reverse grid. So they just want to play, um, they want to do some careful risk management here. But when you've got a car right in front of you, the racer inside speaks a lot louder than the than the car mind. Um, so it's going to be an interesting couple of couple of laps for, for Tom Free in particular. He's got, he's got cars either side of him. He looks like he's got pace too on Jack Boyd just ahead of him at the moment. So see how the hyperdrive car fares at the moment. The update on the 20 battle for 25th, it's still on between Kinman and Zating. It looks like they've dropped Pengley who was looking really racy a lap ago. So I wonder if the um, MFR car will be able to get back in the, into the fight. Well, that's crucial because Pengilly is on the outside looking in. Let's keep an eye out on Andrew Gilliam. He's not quite too far away. As Maloney there in 30th place. He's not too far out of the picture either. So keep an eye on Maloney. He's got a couple laps. He wants to try and pull himself back into play. And he's running laps quicker, but he's stuck behind Baron and Spithill to red back and mark one. And he needs to find a way through. And he's looking, looking, looking in the Trans-Tasman car. Down to the inside, he will go. And can he get the move done? Oh, no, there's contact. There's contact. And just like that, uh, Jay, uh, our director, has just cursed Jake Maloney there, saying he's close, he's close. And just like that, he then sends an apology in. And Maloney's day is done. He'll have to start from the back in race two as well. So he will have to try and do the best that he possibly can. Look down the inside a little bit further down in the back. Taliancic making contact there with Hooper. Hooper on the outside. Taliancic trying to force away down that inside at turn two. Always going to be favoring through three and four and looking towards turn five as well as he got it sorted. He can't get the cover up though. And there's a bit of a wiggle on the grass. Here's McKnight thinking about the inside. Ah, oh, they're going to go three wide. Down on the brakes they go and no room for them. Guy Leach is going to try and pick up a three for one offer. He can't get there. It's it's all on for the 20s. Oh, now they're three wide into a, into a corner. We've seen far too many incidents already. Taliantz just looked like he was going to lose it even before we get there. Oh, a and late that's... defense from Guy Leach. Oh, and Cam Dance sneaking in as well. He gets a spot on Robert Hooper. So just mugging him there late in the day. But how about that move from Jamie McKnight? You've got to tip your hat to that one. Three wide into the hairpin, a potential top 10 candidate for, the, uh, for iRacing highlights for this month. 
And Bowden's just slid wide and Pengilly's through an Adam Zeitinger. So now Wayne Pengilly finds himself in the magical top 25 position. He's looking to try and get some security here against David Kinman, who's a lot better through this section, a lot more aggressive as they go through. We do apologize for not bringing you what's happening up near the front of the field because this is going to be crucial for this second race. Kinman still holding off 24th, but he outbreaks himself here, and Pengilly's got a nose to the inside. He's got the outside for the final corner with two laps left on the clock. Zeitinger will be desperate to try and get through. Now I think David Kidman's the cork in the bubble here. Big look to the inside then from Wayne Pengilly. Trying to find a way down the inside, and he's got him, and he's got a door as well. Into the grass goes. They go three wide for pole on the next race, and around the outside, in the middle they go. They make three wide work. That's brilliant work between them, and still Zaitia can't find it. Well, they had to get the elbows out. These are the widest well, widest versions of these cars you'll see late on the brakes for Pengley around the outside this time. If he can hold it, there is a little bit of traction out there and potentially get it for the S's at the right. That's a good exit from Pengley. I think he's done enough there. He just needs to keep it brave, keep it lead, late on the brakes and keep it composed. And he's looking like he's got it just about good. sort of, but it's too early to call. Yeah, it looks like he's done it. No Constantine oh. effect there. He runs a little bit wide there, but I think he's got it. Kinman looks like he's he's a he's a fish out of water at the moment with that damaged car, and Zeitinger will surely be keen to wrap him up and see if he can catch up after Pengali. Great move from Wayne Pengali. Kinman's the bubble. Pengali is trying to get away. Zeitinger can't get it on the inside. Barrett and Bowden and Page and Thompson and Harris and Smart all sit and wait and look and hope that there is an opportunity but the white flag is out for dane warren who leads this race overall as we hit the final lap jackson susan harlow not close enough yet had a little look down the inside on jared philstow not going to get it at turn five gilliam all over the back on scott o'keefe here in the battle for fifth place can he have a look down at turn five he makes a big lunge down to the inside door firmly shut down on him there and you know what Gilliam, you've got to try and get this move done. You're a bit childish in the early stages of this race. You've got to grow up now and make sure you make a man of this overtake. And he's not going to be close enough into the next section. Boyd trying to attack Ruben Goodall late on in this one. He's going to have that battle as well as that big scrap going on for the top 25, which is currently Kinman still defending as if his life depended on it at this stage but for dane warren it's two corners to go and now one more he's been a cut above the rest of the field in this opening race and dane warren makes it seven different winners in eight uh, in eight races here in aosc this season dane warren wins the first race here at barber jared Vilsa will get second jackson suits and harlow third with ross in fourth o'keefe i think is going to hold on for a top five here through the final corner and yes he will what a great result that is and his contact the good all through the final couple of corners jack boy could not find a way through as tom freer will not get the run that he needs over to the line he'll search but he will not find as he crosses the start finish line mcknight trying to fight for it but for the top 25 adam zeitinger this is do or die now gotta make the move had a good run but he's had to check it up through the final corner and there's going to be no room at the end david kinman survives to take pole for race two of the night what great racing uh i'm sure kinman is breathing a big sigh of relief he had a lot to do that entire race he was clearly clearly struggling with that but oh that was that was a fantastic action-packed race the cu first couple of laps not so pleased with what we saw but hey it provided some pretty pretty entertaining stuff um to for sorry to set us up for race two coming up very 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 soon and a huge race in terms of the championship and how that all plays out official classified results then up on your screen dane warren wins by six seconds over Jared Philsell. You think you run you wonder why Red Bull picked up Dane Warren? Well, that is the reason why. Jared Philsell getting second position, the walking shore driver for ERT. Jackson Susan Harlow, the 16-year-old, gets third place ahead of Jordan Ross in fourth, who's trying to bring his championship back and he gains even more points. Scott O'Keefe, a great top five for the Gone Rogue driver, and arguably you could say driver of the day performance by him in terms of this opening race with Andrew Gilliam in sixth position, maybe need to find himself a bit more maturity after contact with both Brett Loxton and also Harley Haber. Marlon McMullen, good, solid points again for the championship leader. Seventh place overall, he will take to the bank with Bo Albert getting four places, rounding out the top eight. Then st starting in ninth, staying in ninth, Ruben Goodall for the Omen Esports team. 
Jack Boyd moves from 14th to 10th with Tom Freer 13th to 11th. Brett Loxton, a bit of a fall from grace down to 12th place. Damian Johnston up five places up to 13th. Then we have Kyle Stokes in the Triple Eight recovered okay from that from that shunt. So he'll be starting mid pack. Uh, once again for race number two. Then Steve Jansen, a quiet race in the 15th, and then rounding out our 16 was Jamie Slovold for Team Hyperdrive. Harley Haber's Mark 1 challenge fades a little bit with a 17th place finish, but he has the chance to gain those points back with a good grid slot in the next race coming up. So Jamie McKnight then 18th, Guy Leach 19th, holding off a whole slew of vehicles. Knight did manage to get through one. Michael Taliancic rounding out the top 20. Cam Dance, Robert Hooper, Stephen Varga and Wayne Pengilly make the top 24. And what an amazing race it was for, for that 25th spot that ultimately went to David Kinman. So he'll be pleased to start from pole position. He dealt with the pressure well before. He has to deal with the whole field behind him in a few minutes' time. So keen to see how that's going to go. And just missing out on that reverse grid pole, Adam, Adam Zatinger. Still a good race for him, though. Then in 27, we had Michael Barron, who threw away a spot in that top 25. So he'll be kicking himself for that to be just four tenths off a, a potential pole position. Then Rob Bowden for tanked SRT in 28th. Luke Page in 29th. Sean Thompson recovering from, from a shunt early on with his teammate Rob Harris following him behind. And then Christian Smart in 32nd. Sure, the spin for him. Simon Mazomo uh, could not catch the safety car, so to speak. He was only in 33rd position overall, a gain of three places. Simon Vella, 34th. Gavin Cox. Uh, in 35th, Scott Gamble there in 36th did not make many places. He only made the one. Uh, Jonathan Bain, uh, Jared Tapsell, Chris Barnes, and uh, Matthew Norris going absolutely nowhere. 40th position. The final few drivers, though, uh, that make their way through. Anthony Green and Mark Dial finished on the lead lap. Wayne Taylor, Michael Spithill. Uh, Wayne Taylor a lap down. So Spithill, Maloney, Jacob Knight, and Shane Rayner all failing to make it to the end of that race. But we're going to step aside very briefly here on the iRacing Esports Network because there's two races tonight. It's a 60-60. you got to love 60-60s. 25-man reverse grid. David Kinman starting from the pole. The man who defended everything will now defend an entire race for 15 more laps. 40 of the best sim races. $100,000 on the line. Who will rise to the challenge? This is the most competitive and sought after season in iRacing World Championship history. This is where legends are made. This is the Porsche Esports Super Cup. You wanted the best, you got them for a breast. Often imitated, never duplicated. The greatest show on dirt, the world of outlaws.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Parramatta Suzu Ute AOSC series. Here at Barber, it has been a powder keg for many different reasons, some good, some bad, here from the racing action that we have seen. And I think a lot of drivers have a lot of explaining to do after this opening race, and only more so when drivers get desperate in this second race here, this reverse grid race, which becomes so very, very crucial for points. We take a look at the standing coming into this event. This doesn't include the last race that we've just had. And in terms of overall championship that we are looking at, it was Harley Haber in control by 20 points overall. That lead is gone now here. Jake Sperry, uh, Ross Rizzo here, and also Jay Kennedy on the cameras. Ross, that championship lead is gone, but he's got a great chance to get it all back again. Yeah, he does. He's got this plenty of races left in the season he's proven he's got plenty of pace but one thing i am doubting myself with haber is i still think this is a um more of a proving ground for him rather than a chance to uh to win a championship each race he wants to be the wants to be the best but we know full well that championships don't come by being the best in every single race it's the best over the course of a season and mullen mcmullen knows that better than everyone and after that race probably will take the lead in in the championship if i'm, if I'm not mistaken but again Mark mcmullen didn't didn't provoke any fights just kind of minded his own business and got a good result out of it while hey but bit of push bit of pushing and shoving some people weren't keen to uh were keen to um dish out what he dishes back so yeah he's gonna he's gonna have to um get his head back in the game and uh, have a good race too certainly is gonna have to have a good race too and let's not forget that marlon mcmullen has not won a race this season let's talk about the non-enduro championship though that is marlon mcmullen's and only by 10 points coming in so if anything it's a bigger lead for mcmullen in the non-enduro it's been in the enduro where mark one have come back 1020 against 1010 points overall in terms of the team's championship evolution racing team who have controlled that is jordan ross and carl stokes 1706 that's where Jordan Ross is going to be getting most of his points. When it's been him on his own, it's been huge struggles this season to try and get those points back after a slow start, a traditionally slow start to the season. Yeah, which um, which I'm sure is a bit disappointing. And he did say after Cody was he was a little bit downbeat on his on his chances, but I think got him last last weekend. Uh, he will have the confidence. The confidence should be pretty high, sky high for Jordan. Picked up a clean fourth place in that last race, and after the world team to explode in the mid pack, you definitely can't write himself off for this championship. So I'm keen to see how he's going to go for the remainder of the race. Stokes had a quiet race as well in that one, but we know when they get to the enduro mode, they're an excellent pairing. So expect them to deliver more in the team's championship as well. Well, this is something else to keep in mind because the points coming out of this round are a combination of both races. You do not get points for race one, points for race two. You get a combined points total, which becomes very, very vital in terms of this one, how it's going to all play out. So you might get two race victories. You might also see drivers really struggle out there in that second race and throw quite a lot of points away because they can't make their way through the field. This is a huge test for these drivers. A lot of these drivers do not have much experience with reverse grid racing, which in and of itself is an art form of its own. And for someone who's covered reverse grid racing uh, quite religiously over the last couple of years, you know that the first port of call is surviving the opening two laps, avoiding landmines. From there, you go out there, you be aggressive. Yeah, and I'm looking at some of the guys who are very high, who will be in the thick of the action, whom I'm not um, so sure about their their, their experience in this car. Um, not throwing people under the bus, but we know Bo Albert in particular is a GT driver, so how will he go when he's in the thick of things? Scott O'Keefe, an amazing drive in the last race, will be right, will be just inside the top 20, I recall, and Ruben Goodall as well will have a tough job ahead of him. So guys guys with lots of experience like Marlon, he's a bit conservative when he makes passes, but he knows he's going to be quicker than the cars ahead, so I'm expecting some decisive moves. As for the likes of Haber, I'm curious to see how, how, how many, how many stamps, uh, stamps he's going to lick to get back towards the front. Well, he's not got very far to go. I think starting only from the fourth row, which is about where he started in the opening race. So he's got an easier job of things than a lot of others. Question becomes, though, how hard will Phil Sell and Dane Warren and the likes of Jordan Ross and Jack Susan Harlow battle in the field to try and gain their positions? Because they are all incredibly quick, incredibly aggressive, 
but ultimately I think quite a few of these drivers know that they have to have the toughest run of everyone here today try and gain those positions back after a great open round this is going to be a test of how they go about things and overtake and as we know very religiously talking about Jared Philsell He's at his worst when he's battling because he's a driver who likes to be out there on his own, racing his own race and pulling away from driving. Yeah, he'll definitely be interesting to watch. We saw he got an amazing launch uh, to start race number one and he starts every time are uh, near perfect so i'm expecting more of the same which means he could have a chance to pull away from dane if not wrap up um uh sorry potentially wrap up uh jsh and his teammate jordan ross might be uh, might be willing to work with him there so i think jared's got a fair bit uh, on his side for this race and i think he'll be keen just to be able to ha have a bit of a lob i think he would say and prove why he's one of the best operators in the business to quote one of his fav uh, favorite uh, benchmark operators Oh, well, you very much will try and prove that he is one of the uh, benchmark operators, so to speak. But we are just half a minute away from getting the second race underway. And what are we expecting here? Because that pack just in front of that top 20 fought incredibly hard with likes of Jane McKnight and Cam Dance and Guy Leach and co. That's the front of the field that Harley Haber's got to make a way through early for his championship. How do you see that opening pack battle in these early stages? Well, we saw that three wide pass from Jamie and as well as Guy picking up a couple of straight positions, experience and composure really playing well for both of those guys. So they won't be they won't be a walkover for for even really fast guys like Haber. So he's Haber and what and the guys behind them are really going to have to play smart, try and rattle the cage a little bit of these guys. But they are stern defenders, stern drivers, and they'll actually be looking forward, uh, looking to race forward rather than backwards certainly will and well this is practice over the race coming to you as follows and it will be a quick fire grid for this because we know you've only got a minute to get yourself up on that gridding position so david kinman start on the front row with wayne pengilly alongside stephen varga and robert hooper on the second row row three cam dance and michael talianch guy leach jamie mcknight seventh and eighth ninth place start for harley haber he's got jamie stovold in tenth then Steve Jansen, Kyle Stokes, Damian Johnston, Brett Loxton, a bit of a disaster in race one, Tom Freer, uh, and Jack uh, Jack Boyd, Ruben Goodall, Bo Albert, Mullen McMullen, new championship leader in 19th, and then Andrew Gilliam, a bit of a bit of a firecracker in 20th. You got Scott O'Keefe, Jordan Ross, Jackson, Susan Harlow, Jared Philsell, Dane Warren cut, makes the 25 cutoff there. Adam Zeitinger, Michael Barron, Rob Bowden, and Luke Page. The rest of your drivers cycling through then on the field all the way down to jake maloney in 44th position overall as we get this second race of the night underway very soon five seconds late grid up then for cam dance who waits as long as possible here's a minute lights on on top of the iris and gantry race two david kinman to defend And there's the green and go, and there is the start. And it's a pretty decent start from everyone. Pengili even then, as they make their way towards turn number one. Already looking at about two wide in the middle of the pack there. Harley Haber already having to defend or trying to attack here. Jane McKnight, he does so around the outside. Guy Leach struggles, Haber struggles, as he just dives himself a little bit wide. But the opening start, all nice and dandy there for David Kimmon at the front of the field. Pengili there in second position, and Varga currently there in third. Having to worry about who's behind. Already huge look then from Haber. He looks down the inside of Jane McKnight, someone he knows all too well, as there's a little bit of a wide move there in the back. In the middle of the pack, starts the struggle, and round goes to the RT machine. Oh, there's Phil Stoll, and Gilliam's gone, and he's taken Zeitinger with him, so a disaster for some of the front runners there. Wow, a massive, massive instant in the early stages, but it looks like this. Kim and from Varga, Pengili Hooper, Taliancic rounds out the top five at the moment. Haber's made one position off this start. That's very crucial, but keep an eye out on where Marlon McMullen is, and he has survived. He is unscathed as he is behind Jack Boyd, Bo Albert, Ruben Goodall, Steve Janssen and co. As they go through, battle for third though. Big look to the inside of Robert Hooper. Goes Wayne Pengili as Pengili tries to get aggressive. Taliancic trying to find a move. He can't find it they stay where they are as jordan ross gets himself on the radio i think something may have uh, just happened to him he's got big issues as dane warren i think has been turned oh disaster for our foot for a race one winner just trying to pick him up yeah he's got a lot of damage at the moment oh it was Way with down, jordan but... ross oh dear so with jordan ross what about oh that is a messy incident there can't quite oh. see who turned in on who there here we go again so oh dane with I a late move there 
Yeah, Dane a bit too far back there, a bit silly, and um, Jordan just escapes with it. Will probably be quite, quite pleased he got away with it. Well, it's a big hit for the championship battle for the lead, though. David Kim and under pressure here as there goes Stephen Varga as Haber in the background gets away through on Guy Leach. But it's not over. Kimman's going to fight this all the way to 7, 8, 9. And he's going to give him just a bit of racing room. Oh, they touch! He's turned Varga! Varga's in the fence and he comes straight back out onto track. He is able to keep it in the wall. There's drama as the two vehicles go straight on. One's Guy Leach, one's Wayne Pegilly. And by hook or by crook, Kimman still leads. Um, and not the way he probably wants to, and certainly not the way we want to. That was... Oh, he's been... He's got a tap! Wild. He's trying to redress the position, I think, there, and that's allowed Hooper to take the lead, and now Tali Antic fights it for second place. Haber is now up into fourth place overall, and here's third. He's down the inside of Wayne Pengilly, just like that. Harley Haber is getting exactly what he wants. Wow, well, <laughs> taking a bit of a Marlon McMullen-esque approach there uh, for, for Harley Haber. But, oh, that, that race exploded in just half a lap there. And we've got a completely new order. I thought Taliantic was was faring up a chance for a victory. But he is now in position... Hang on, what's going on? Position number two... Yeah, so sorry. Robert Hooper leading. Taliantic in second, probably still faring a chance for the win. Haber in third. Then Cameron Dance, phenomenally in fourth place. Jamie McKnight in fifth will be pleased with that. Guy Leach in sixth. David Kinman from... A bit of a fall from grace in the last couple of laps. Stovold made his way up to eighth. Tom Freer ninth. And then Wayne Pengley just got past Bo Albert for the top ten. Yeah, and look at this. It's Marlon McMullen thinks about Brett Locksley. He's now broke himself. He somehow managed to avoid everyone as he goes straight on into the gravel trap at five. As Bo Albert gets by Wayne Pengley there. And just like that, Brett Locksley's day goes from bad to cataclysmic as they move on forward. On the brakes they go into 789 once again. And still a mistake coming in from Jamie McKnight. This allows Guy Leach down the inside and he takes the position away and moves inside the top five. Good work overall as Bo Albert gets a slowdown penalty and he'll drop positions here. And that allows McMullen the chance to go through. And look how aggressively he served it. He's straight back on Marlon McMullen and trying to go around the outside at the next section of the track. But McMullen has gone far too deep in on the brakes and he now has to check up. Contact between the pair. McMullen and now has no boot lid as there's a little a slide in the background and that is Jack Boyd losing positions and there is Phil Sell I believe moving back a couple of places no that's Jordan Ross moving back a couple of places somehow still in this as Jackson Susan Harlow has damage as well to boot uh, the panel beat is going to be happy with how this pack is looking right now not many straight straight fenders at the moment Scott O'Keefe defending from Jack Boyd so Haber's Haber's made a mistake as well so Cameron Dance still applying pressure here but he's minute. let Robert Hooper's got a massive lead. Taliantic made contact Taliantic. with Haber. Yeah, he's been turned by Haber. Haber gave him a tap through turn 15. And just like that, Taliantic drops a whole boatload of positions. Harley Haber up into that next position. Replay up on screen as Stovold gets his way by. Taliantic gets a second bit of contact, this time with Wayne Pengilly, a little bit further on down the road. So it's all kicking off. And there was the incident that you see on screen as Harley Haber made contact there with Taliantic. But Stovold and Tom Freer have changed places out on track. It is Hooper from Haber. And now Cam Dance holding the podium off as Guy Leach tries to get aggressive and battle it out on track. And watch out for Hyperdrive because Tom Freer is coming into the battle. Yeah, he's had a little bit of a quiet night, but how, now he's on the attack. That move from Haber on Taliantic was was real. It was silly at best. There was, there was no move there at all. So Taliantic will be very aggrieved with with that move he was on on for a chance of a win if not a podium but now they're now they're chasing down robert hooper he's done a good job out front so far but this pack behind is just really looking like it's getting sketchy haber pulling away from cam dance at the moment and is now under attack from guy leach yeah he is under attack and now they are starting to think about well how do you attack marlon mcmullen is now behind steve jansen at the moment in 13th place harley haber for retrospective is second overall that tells you all you need to know at the moment about where drivers are looking to try and get their points jansen goes too deep this is going to allow mcmullen the chance to go down to the inside try and make that move Guy Leach has a great run here on Cam Dance in the battle for the podium. He gets down the inside of him. And can he get it slowed up? Yes, he can. But what about the run on the exit? Can run too wide off the exit as Freer gets a wiggle. Can't get by Kinman 
as they continue to go on. Uh, still, Cam Dance holding that inside line. Has he held off Guy Leach, who zooms around the outside and goes far too deep on the brakes? He'll have to cut the slowdown for it, though, as that will be a fantastic thank you, sir, there from Cam Dance, who holds on to third. This will allow the likes of Jane McKnight the chance to go through. Maybe Kimman as well. Only McKnight gets through. Uh, and then he's, but Leach will have a compromised run. Oh, actually, no, I, he proves me wrong. He has a very good run out of out of the S's here. Jamie defends the position slightly, overshoots it slightly as well. The cutback on for Guy Leach. Can't quite get the grip when he needs it, but look at... Look, oh, McKnight nearly spears it off into the grass. But Guy Leach, professional move there. Kinman. Oh, and Kinman in too late, but just, King, just avoids a spin. Good respect from those guys there, not to press on with that. But I was surprised by the mistake earlier from Guy Leach that led to the little slowdown in the first place. He's back up into the position that he was, but he's lost a heap of ground to Cam Dance. Eyes bigger than the belly syndrome there as Tom Freer really struggling to get past David Kinman. And there's been a bit of history between these two and hyperdrive and Kinman. And they'll try and make sure that they find a way through as quickly as they can. Harley Haber has caught the back of Robert Hooper in the battle for the race lead, though. And this is crucial because Hooper now has to play defense here as he tries and battles it out. As I believe it is going to be uh, zero against a certain Mark 1 team, but we'll see as finally Tom Freer gets it by Kinman, who now will have to look to the outside. Tom Freer's got it, and now Stovold will be next in terms of the traitor battle as they continue on that run. McMullen gets on the radio as he has to try and battle hard. The likes of Damien Johnstone, who he's just managed to get through, and Janssen, and issues as O'Keefe gets the slide on as well, and nowhere to go for Susan Harlow. And oh, big one, two in the fence. I uh, don't quite have eyes on that at the moment. We'll have to pick up a replay in just a moment. Oh, and Harlow's just been just been given a hip check as well, forced off the road at the S's. Jordan Ross will pick up two positions on the rundown to the S's. No, he won't. Jack Boyd goes in deep to hold the position off. Certainly does, and it's all kicking off as we get a replay of exactly what has been happening. But everywhere you look, there is battles. We don't really have too much time. The halfway stage coming up. West End Man's their instant replay up on your screen right now as the battle for the league continues. This is Steve Janssen. This is what happened with him. So he goes down this section, gets a tap from Scott O'Keefe. Then you see the likes of Susan Harlow trying to find a way through. He's got nowhere. And then two to the fence. One's Janssen, one's O'Keefe. And both of them then having a very long day coming on from this point further. Here's Harley Haber, though, looking for the move. Danny inside at turn five. Hooper tries to defend him every stage of the way, but he has to leave the door open for him. But they'll have to fight this one for the next section. And Hooper's not giving up on this one against Harley Haber. The dynamite that he is, the Vegemite of sim racing. But just like that, here is the attempt. Around the outside, he tries to look, but no dice as Harley Haber again has to sit and wait behind Hooper. Excellent driving from Rob Hooper there. Got the traction out of the out of the hairpin and then called his bluff into the S's. But does he really want to fight Haber for this victory? Well, I guess he does. Uh, you fighting for a victory, but I would assume there has to be a post-race penalty coming in for Harley Haber. We'll see whether that's going to bother him or not. It's certainly not bothering Harley. He's still having a crack. He'll need to make the pass nice and clean. Oh, Hooper gets grass, uh, picks up some grass on the way through there. Leaves the door open. Not quite. White actually did a nice little slide job there, I must say. Oh, and then Haber licking the stamp into the final corner. Bit of a hip check, but we'll get the move Got it. done. So a spontaneous move from Haber there to take the lead of the race from Rob Hooper. Catch him when you least expect it. The final corner, a little bit of contact there. But in this style of Aussie Touring Car Racing, that is agreeable there. Good move from Harley Haber. He leads the race overall as we hit the second half of this event. Haber leads, Hooper second, Cam Dance third, Jamie McKnight in fourth, Guy Leach fifth, Tom Freer sixth, Ovald seventh, Albert in eighth, Kinman ninth, and Wayne Pengilly rounds out the top 10 after eight laps worth of racing. Here's Jack Boyd under pressure, though, because it's Jordan Ross and Jackson Susan Harlow. Keep an eye out on Ross. He's trying to get as many points as he possibly can. You're not going to get him going sideways, and he gets the move done. How the hell do you get the move done? And round you go. And Susan Harlow hits the instant point, and he turned round Jack Boyd at the same time. And I have to say that... That is a massive, massive incident overall. John Ross, I think, just got the DQ as well. So Jack Boyd's been turned. And I think Jackson Susan Harlow here is going to have to take a week off after that because that is not what you do when you have an incident point. Turn another driver when you get DQ'd. Yeah, well, Jordan came came in on the rears and, you know, Jordan, uh, sorry, Jackson could have 
checked up a little bit harder, but it was diff a difficult situation scenario to avoid. But now both of them have to deal with the DQ, such as these harsh penalty penalty point limits. But you know you can't afford to go door to door racing that crazy. They've picked up 15 incident points or so in less than eight laps of racing. To a lap, to a lap. That's all I will say. You never have to a lap around this track and. I think all these drivers know that even if the best can do it, they're in a little bit of a pickle. But Mullen, though, will be happy with this. He's in 11th position overall. And get this right, Jake Maloney, who started 44, is now 16th place. He's the biggest gainer in the field, as he traditionally is in racing like this. To keep an eye on that, battle for the minor places. Fourth place on at the moment. As Guy Leach tries to get past Jay McKnight, and the Hyperdrive boys are on the train trying to get through, as is Bo Albert trying to make sure that he's got that chance to go and make that overtake as well. We'll keep an eye on McMullen. He's got both Pengilly and Kinman to get by. It's going to be difficult with the damage on his rear of the machine. And Taliantris has just dropped a number of spots running wide at the hairpin again. Ruben Goodall outside with an impressive move oh, around, the, around the outside. But he's got, yes, he has gone deep, but might be able to keep the position. No, nope, Taliantris gets a great... No, that shouldn't be a slowdown, but he's got a great traction out of the out of that corner, does Taliantris, but will have to yield into the S's. Yep, had to yield there, Ruben Goodall doing well then to hold off that position and did so quite nicely, but it's that battle, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, that's be the big one at the moment, out on track as Jamie McKnight and Guy Leach continues to have a scrap, Freer, Strovold, Albert, all there, all wanting to get in involved and trying to keep themselves into play in terms of their own scraps, they want as many points as they can, this is their best chance I think, there are quite a few drivers of getting as many points as possible as they continue to race up on the brakes. Turn number two, McKnight is driving fantastically at the moment in fourth place. He's gained four positions in this one already, and he is looking like he is very much happy to sit where he is. Behind that, Kinman under pressure, though, and this is crucial for McMullen. He needs as many as he can. Yes, absolutely, and he's got a rather fast Pengley to have to get around as well. He just about pulls it up in time. Uh, he's on the outside for this S's complex. Um, yeah, won't be able to make anything work of that, but I am wondering about the damage on the rear end of that car for Mullen, if he's got the straight line speed. He's going to go deep on the brakes anyway into the S's. He locks it up, just keeps it out of the out of the um, MFR car ahead of him. Oh, just having to use a, a lot of that car control that he's learned over over the years, but he's going to have to dig deep to get higher in the top 10. But I do wonder, is is he playing the top risk management game? There's no way he's going to be able to close too much of a gap on Harley, but these other drivers, other championship combatants have had a disastrous race so far. Oh, Tom Freer with the up and under, looked at the inside, turns to the outside. He's got the inside line picked on Guy Leach, who has been right royally chest out of that move. Brilliant work, but Freer, he's not giving this one up, buddy. Here's Guy Leach down the inside of the final corner. That's the resolve that Guy Leach has, but up to the inside for turn one, and it's taken half a lap to get this move sorted, surely now, for Tom Freer, who goes down the inside, and can he shut the door? Yes, he can. Finally, Tom Freer with the hyperdrive car up into four. And one of the best moves of the night, night as well. He started 15th as well, so he's been a massive mover and shaker, and looking uh, and now into the top five. So a great drive from from Freer so far. Guy Leach having to defend from the hyperdrive teammate, McMullen. and in comes Bo Albert. McMullen, yeah, yeah, McMullen. good move. Yeah, yeah, sorry, keep on McMullen as well. They're three wide in the background, but two wide they go as McMullen and Pengilly continue. Damien Johnstone getting in, and McMullen getting on the radio saying, Come on, mate, I need to get through. And obliging there does that. But running wide goes McMullen. He went too deep. He'll probably cop a slowdown for it, though, as Guy Leach holds off Stovold, holds off Albert. But where is the slowdown coming from? And it's right in the middle of the road. That's cheeky from McMullen. He's hurt the slowdown in the middle of the road. Pengilly gets a tap from Brett Loxton. Damien Johnstone wants in on the outside as well. And he's got away with that one there. That's so cheeky. I'd even say protestful there for Wayne Pengilly there because of the way that McMullen took the slowdown. Yeah, race control might want to get involved, and that's not what Marlon wants. He needs to keep his nose clean as well. But um, uh, this this battle for eighth, uh, from sixth to eighth, starting with Bo Albert, still still uh, well and truly on. Stovold's got a lot of pace here, or maybe it's just Guy Leach really starting to struggle from his seventh grid spot. Um, so 
the hyperdrive cars looking quite good in race two in particular. Stovold's been excellent tonight. One of my um, one of my picks for driver of the night. Been a bit of a quiet achiever so far. He's got a run heading into the hairpin, but Freer also on the outside of Jamie McKnight just ahead. Uh, he's trying to get it slowed down. Can he get up and under McKnight? No, he can't. So I have to wait then for fourth place. I will correct myself from earlier. Then, as I said, it was fourth, but actually it was fifth. Guy Leach still under pressure. Dover wants to get in. Keep an eye on the battle for second as well, because Cam Dance is there on Robert Hooper. But we know Hooper very good on the defense. Joe with Harley Haber a little bit earlier on. So look at this then. As uh, To the outside, he tries. No dice at the moment as they head through the left and the right they go through so for the time being tom freer still stuck in the section cam dances around cam dances around as he goes through and he's done it all on his own so cam dance turns it and loses a podium oh, he was looking really good too did cam dance so that's so all maloney. Gone. so maloney gets turned bang into the wall with a dq gets a second hit as well that practically ends him but get an eye on cam dance because he's going through this next section, back to 11th place, and we gets a bit of grasp, and around he went. So just like that, Cam Darts losing a podium, losing a top 10, it seems, at this stage, because Tom Freer now in fourth, McKnight up on the podium, and this is glorious for Marlon McMullen, who's now up into ninth place overall. So he's been patient and reaped the rewards. Well, actually, he's been pr pretty vocal about trying to get some moves on. But he's he's still kept the car on the road, unlike others, and is now reaping the benefits. So uh, I'm just looking with Wayne Pengley, who started second, is now 12th. Might ha will still have a fight on his hands to f fight off um, Damian Johnson. And Michael Taliantic, who is looking good for a podium, only down in 14th at the moment. Now, I believe we had a DQ recently as well for the Zero Esports goal of Goodall, which is a real shame. He was having a fairly strong evening. Well, with the reverse grid race, uh, it's going to be really, really aggressive and uh, it's not paid off come the end. Kinman still playing defensive tactics then. He's trying to hold off Bo Albert for the last three laps of this one. But for the podium again, Tom Freer looking at his magical setup, the move place, which is up the hill here through turn 12, 13, and then through the next section of the track. Again, not able to do it. Wise to the move there is Jamie McKnight, who cannot get through for the podium. That pretty much secured Haber in the lead and Hooper in second, so long as they keep clean on their incident point, which is very crucial. Look at who's got into at the moment and you have to say that McMullen probably the closest to the lot on 11 at the moment in terms of getting it and he's going aggressive here can't afford any 4x contact at all at this point or he's in the ditches no chance then as he tries to go through turn two gets the shove from behind then from Cam Dant so that's no instant point there from that hit very crucial there only a 0x but Kinman now trying to get himself in the aggressive mode as here we go Loxton trying to go for the outside as well as they've got Tom Freer got off Freer's got off then, so that's a huge one then for Tom Freer. This allows Jamie Stovold going up through, and on top of that, Guy Leach is third. What? How did, how did this all unfold? We're going to have to have a quick quick look at what's happened. So I can see Freer has had a, a look on Jamie McKnight, who has defended the position. Um, oh, and a touch from Tom Freer. It's turning Jamie McKnight, and that allows... Guy Leach and Jamie Stovold through. Oh, a little bit of a hit check on the way out for Stovold and McKnight. Well, it's all kicked off, and it's kicked off for 15 straight laps as the white flag cometh for Harley Haber, who leads this race off, getting through Rob Hooper and turning Jamie McKnight ever so slightly. They still battle. Here's Bo Albert through on Jamie Stovold then with a lap and two corners left to go in this one. McMullen still got to try and defend him because there's Brett Loxton, the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be, trying to find their way through here in Leeds, Alabama to try and get this one sorted. Can he get down the inside in the battle for eighth place? No. Remember, Marlon is so tight on incident points. He's got to be absolutely flawless through this section. Cannot afford contact as Loxton tries to go through. There's a spinner almost in the background there. That was Pengilly trying to get himself through. But look at this. Loxton getting himself to the inside. And McMullen has to leave the room now because he can't afford any form of contact as they go on the brakes into turn number three. No dice then as they continue to move forward. McMullen loses now. Drops back to ninth but should be safe from here on 
out for the time being. Still, though, mistake from Free. He's got to gather it up then as he caught a bit of grass heading through that section. Just about slows it down, but he's still got a chance here on Jamie McKnight if he thinks about it. Bo Albert looking at this, thinking there's maybe fourth place still in the off. And Guy Leach currently still in third place overall. But to Harley Haber, who has run away from the field when he needed it most, when he had himself turned around by Andrew Gilliam and co. And was not best pleased with the way that he was running in the opening race. Harley Haber rounds the final corner and picks up his second race win of the season as he wins here at Barber. And he'll be so pleased with that one. Robert Hooper will get second, Guy Leach third, and Jamie McKnight will hold off Tom Freer for the finish. It'll be ninth place for Marlon McMullen, who will get two solid results out of that one as they battle for the end. Pengilly will not get past Cam Dance to finish off the racing action. But my goodness, a bomb exploded here in Leeds, Alabama, and it ended up with everybody losing their damn mind. <laughs> yeah, I think we've lost our minds as well. A fantastic yet <laughs> crazy race that we've seen We've seen here. A win going to Harley Haber, but in controversial circumstances when he did turn the to Michael Talianchis towards the start of the race. So we don't know whether that win will hold. And Marlon McMullen unable to really make huge inroads and, of course, had to play the risk management game, being so tight on incidents, but will come home in ninth. I also want to just give a quick shout-out to Robert Hooper with a fantastic second place for the, cave, the Caveman... I think the um, I think they're a development team for the Omen Zero Esports, who are, of course, on an excellent run of form lately. So well done to those guys. Well, that's fantastic racing overall and official classified results then here from Barber Motorsport Park are as follows. Harley Haber picks up the win by four seconds in the end over Robert Hooper in second. Guy Leach getting himself to a third place overall. Jamie McKnight gets fourth with Tom Freer, a top five finish, but it could have been more for it not to be the penultimate lap. Sixth position will go to Bo Albert. Jamie Stovold gets seventh. The top eight rounded out by Brett Loxton. In ninth place, Marlon McMullen, who had a fight on his hands all night. Then David Kimmon, who started on pole, finished in tenth. Cameron Dance threw away a podium late, so shame for shame for the Kiwi. Wayne Pengley in twelfth place. Damien Johnstone from thirteenth to thirteenth. Probably a good day for him, a good day considering the uh, the chaos around him. Then we have in fourteenth Michael Taliansic, who we said was looking good for a podium. Simon Vella from thirty fourth to fifteenth. Got to tip your hat to that one, buddy. Um, great drive for Simon Vella. And then Rob Bowden in 16th place. 7th place overall would go Rob Harris. A good run from him, 31st up to 17th. Simon Zomo gains 15 positions as he gets himself up to 18th. Scott Gamble, 19th. Gavin Cox up 15 of his own inside the top 20. Wayne Taylor up 21 places. Halves his position. 42nd, 21st, with Matthew Norris in 22nd, Steve Janssen falling back to 23rd, Michael Spithill 24th overall. 25th went to Christian Smart and then Chris Barnes in 26th. Stephen Varga, a really disappointing race for him, starting from third after being turned on the straight with, with an incident with David Kimmon, so that'll be an interesting one to have to dissect. Then in 28th, a really unfortunate end to uh, what was a really strong start to the night for Scott O'Keefe will round out 28th. Then Sean Thompson in 29th, <laughs> very, very bizarre race uh, evening for him. Mark Dial in, 40, in 40th. Then Andrew Gilliam, who was a powder keg all, all race long in 31st and in 32nd was Luke Page. Well, Mark Dial in 30th, not quite 40 there, but Jonathan Bain, the last finisher on the leading lap in 33rd. Anthony Green finishes one lap down and now we hit retirement central. Ruben Goodall, Jake Maloney, Jared Philsell, Jack Boyd, Jordan Ross, Jackson Susan Harlow. If you've got a J in your name, you're not finishing this race. I'll tell you that right now. Kyle Stokes, Dane Warren, Adam Zeitinger, Michael Barron with technical issues, forcing him to miss start overall but talk about big names best names in that field most of them did not make it no driver who started inside the or finished inside the top four in that first race made it to the flag in the second race that tells you all you need to know about how crazy this next race was as this will pretty much call to an end the racing action that we have here tonight on sim speed tv but we do have driver interviews First and foremost, let's talk to Harley Haber, who's just won this second race. 
Harley, let's go back to race one, though, first and foremost, because uh, you got out there, you got your elbows out, you got aggressive, and then Andrew Gilliam turns you across um, across his nose, and then your night is a case of trying to recover from there. Do you feel like you've been fairly treated in terms of the way that you've been driving in that opening race? you think that Gilliam was being fair with you, or he was trying to be deliberate? Hey guys, um, yeah, definitely um, happy that there's a race on tonight because if it was a popularity contest, I, I definitely would have lost that one. Um, yeah, the guys are racing pretty hard out there at the moment. Obviously, some of us are involved in the championship and others aren't. So it's a different situation up and down, obviously, pit lane, depending on who you're racing. Um, but yeah, the the move on Gilliam was um, not the not the most respectful, but it is what it is and obviously uh, put me in a good spot for for race two. Let's talk about race two, because you had to start from a similar grid position. You had to make your way through the field and ultimately getting those positions earlier. A small tap on your good mate, Jamie McKnight. But the big crucial fact for you is able to get the move on Robert Hooper, run away from the rest of the field and to know that your rivals behind found themselves in a few issues. Um, do you feel like you're in a really good position for this title, seeing as the last few weeks haven't really gone your way and you've dropped 100 points in the championship? Yeah, I think the, the championship side of the world is definitely number one priority at the moment. Uh, d and, you know, it, coming into the last few rounds, it, it, that has been what we've, you know, aimed to kind of improve on. Um, obviously, yeah, that's this round has been quite good for us, I believe. Uh, I think we should now still be in the championship with a, a larger margin than what we came in with, which is always a positive. But, um, yeah, so, so far, so good. Hopefully, I don't think there's too many rounds left to go. So, if we can uh, continue on the up, it'll be, it'll be a good ending. Well, trying to get on the up, trying to get everything to be working out. So, Donington and Suzuka, the next two races, and I believe they're going to be back-to-back -back as well. So, Donington Park coming up next, a traditional track for uh, touring car-style racing. Do you feel like it's going to be very similar to Barber, a case of elbows out, really go out there hard, really go and be aggressive? You can overtake at Donington a bit easier than you can at Barber, I think. Um, I don't know. I think I've won the last AOSC race there. So, I'm coming into it with a little bit of pace, at least. Um, and I'm pretty strong there, so I haven't ever raced at Suzuka, though, so that might be a little bit of a, a battle. Well, that is going to be very, very crucial. Back to back with two 150 uh, races as we do five straight weeks here. AOSC, Harley Haber, before we let you go, shout out sponsors. Who gets it done for the race victory in race two? Yeah, so everyone involved with Mac one obviously Compert, RMS, KR, KRD, uh, yeah, can't thank all the guys enough for for all their help throughout the um, throughout the year, and obviously Mark Samuel and Chris Rad and all the hard work those guys do behind the scenes is what kind of makes this happen. Well, Harley Haber with a very mature interview after a big win in race number two. Your winner though in race one is Dane Warren. He stood by with Ross Rizzo. Congratulations on the race one win, Dane. That was absolutely clinical, but unfortunately, race two not going to plan at all. Can you take us through race one? You had um you had to fight your teammate JSH and of course Jared Philsell himself. So how how did you cope with the pressure and how were you able to just check out from the field the way you did? Um, right, yeah, race one was pretty good for us. Obviously, um, did a bit of setup work throughout the day and well, seemed to nail something for that race, which was nice. Um. I don't know, I just tried to keep calm and steady, um, getting used to some new hardware at the moment, so I just wanted to bring it home, really, and get the laps in, so, yeah, a win was kind of nice. And it looks like the hardware's going well for you so so far. Then what happened in um, in race two? We saw a lot of action going on, unfortunately, I didn't see too much of what happened, but I believe you did You did get turned early on. Uh, yeah, the... There's not much to say about race two. Um, it was a bit of a mess. Uh, turn one seemed to be right, but something happened down at turn three, and I unfortunately copped a bit of a black flag and had to pit. Um, I did actually have a bit of a misjudgment with um, Jordan lap one, and unfortunately, um, I think might have ruined his chances a bit of a better result. But um, yeah, besides that, uh, race two wasn't very good for us. So, where does your attention turn to now? The Monday night official, the next Scops round, or the e, or the E series that with which you completed? You had a good, de a reasonable evening evening on Tuesday night. Yeah, um, I'm not sure. I'm just trying to get used to this new equipment. So, I guess I might have a might get back on the on the official on the official train and have another dip into that. Um, 
I'll just see where we go. Obviously, the more laps we do, the better we are for E Series. So, see how we go. And of course, a great a great showing in with a lockout in uh, race one as well for the Alter Esports crew. Uh, like to give some shout. Would you like to give some shout outs to you to your boys? Yeah, absolutely. Of course, I um, well done to Jackson. He showed some very good pace in um, race race one. I didn't see too much of race two, but you know, got caught up in lap three. Um, of course, a shout out to our sponsors: Logitech G, Astro Gaming, Motion Simulation, Cube Controls, and um, Cams. So that is Dane Warren, who gets himself a win in the opening race of the night. Someone who got a good second place, though, and has quite a bit to talk about is going to be Rob Hooper. Uh, Rob, well, let's just talk first and foremost about just how brilliant <laughs> that drive in the second race was, because you managed to keep your head above water, saw everyone going around you, the only person to get by you really being Harley Haber. So let's just mm. talk about that battle with Harley, because you kept him behind for a good solid two laps, which is very difficult with a driver who loves to be so aggressive. Yeah, no, it was definitely a good race. Um, obviously, my pace wasn't as quick as Harley's, but um, I sort of, you know, I just try to try and do my best and hit those apexes each each lap. And um, obviously, he just chipped away at me and, and got the pass on the last corner. But um, no, nah, it's just, uh, it was it was a fair pass. It was a clean pass. It's just sort of, um, it is what it is. And I, I'm happy to come second. So yeah, yeah. Well, a very good race for you. Let's talk about as well how aggressive everyone was being in that opening race as well, because you found yourself right in the pack with the likes of the Guy Leach, the Michael Taliancic's, and those who normally have a scrap uh, for around that top 10, top 15 in most races. You found yourself in and around that pack. How difficult is it to head on the swivel around this track, knowing that everyone wants to go out there, they have limited laps, and they want to be as aggressive as possible, making as many positions as possible? Yeah, no, that's right. 15 laps is obviously, it's, it's an extremely quick, quick race. Um, so everyone's obviously trying to get up as uh, up, up the front of the grid as, as quick as they can. Uh, but yeah, it's sort of, it is it is what it is. I mean, um, just trying to sort of, you know, keep keep out of everyone's way in, 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 in some cases. But um, no, I mean, for instance, the, the battle with Italiancic and um, I think we were three wide at one, at one stage was pretty, pretty I mean, it's fun. It's, it is fun for me. I'm not going to lie. Um, I don't mind a bit of biff and buff, but it's just, I mean, it just produces good racing for the live stream. And nah, I'm just, uh, it's just exciting to sort of slowly chip away and get to the front of, um, of the pack. And hopefully I'll, uh, I'll be able to stick there in future rounds. And hopefully you are able to stay there. You've got Donington Park coming up in a week's time. Suzuka following after that. Five straight weeks, five straight races. So uh, let's talk Donington for a second, hoping that maybe a similar style of track, which Donington is to Barber, is going to suit you again in favour. Yeah, possibly. Um, I had literally only bought uh, Barber literally only a couple of days ago, so um, it was sort of, yeah, sort of jumped in and, and sort of gave it my best shot. But um, yeah, I think Donington will sort of be similar. Um, obviously, we'll try and put as many laps in as we can um, to get the best possible result. But yeah, it's just sort of everyone's going to be doing the same. So it's just uh, we'll just have to try and see what we can do. Well, we'll hopefully see indeed. Before we let you go, though, any shout out sponsors, anyone you'd like to thank? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, the team at uh, Zero Esports and um, Omen by HP, uh, The Cave, uh, Molecule, Force X, um, I think Sam Blacklock Media and uh, Paladin Esports. Uh, sorry, Sports for the shirts and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah. Cheers, though. So, no worries at all there. Rob Hooper, a great second place overall. Final interview of the night will be with Jackson Susan Harlow. He got third in the opening race of the night. He stood by with Ross Rizzo. Jackson, you had an excellent race one chasing down Jared, and look, you looked really comfortable behind him. Were you a, were you ever able to um, consider making the move, or what was the scenario in being able to um, chase down Jared? Ah, uh, yeah, it was really good race. Um, I felt I had more pace than him, um, but just wherever I could get the run on him, it wasn't really a good passing spot. I had a couple of goes at him, but I just couldn't pull it off. So. Yeah, he held me off quite well. He obviously is a really good driver. So, yeah, I'm not too disappointed I couldn't get past him. But, um, yeah, would have liked a couple more laps to have a couple more goes. Well, it looked like your pace was phenomenal. And it's also coming from your teammate, Dane, with you two locking out the front row in race one. Um, obviously, you fell behind, Jared, I think, from uh, from the start. is those launch, Are those launches, sorry, are those launches something you need to work on at the Altus crew? Yeah, definitely something I need to work on. My starts, yeah, haven't been great, and that's where I usually lose my spots. And, um, 
yeah, whenever I do that, obviously I lose a lot of time and, yeah, it's very hard to pull that time back in when you're racing fast people like Dane and Jared and all them. So, um, yeah, definitely need to work on that. Well, the pace was certainly encouraging, but then we turned to race two and it didn't quite go so well. You had an early DQ on lap eight or so with a small checkup at turn eight. So how did, how did that all unfold? How did you rack up so many incident points so quickly? And how did the race unravel? Yeah, so race two was, yeah, that was a bad race for me. Made up a couple of spots in the turn one and then um, I think Gilliam might have got into the back of Jared and he spun in front of me, I had nowhere to go, hit him and um, got a 4x there, lost a lot of spots and got heaps of damage and um, yeah, had a check up on lap two um, around the second last corner and I ran into the back of Jordan and got another 4x and um, got some more damage which was a bit disappointing but um, I was trying to do what I could with what I had, I was still sticking around 15th, 16th I think, um, I felt I could have maybe got a bit more up and then yeah, just got a couple, about three inks myself, which yeah, I shouldn't have. They were silly mistakes by myself. And um, yeah, when in the hairpin, Jordan and Jack came together that little bit, I didn't realise they were going to check up as much as they did. And yeah, unfortunately, I hit up the back of him. And yeah, that was it. That was the race over. But yeah, the pace was the main thing. That was really all this race was about, just to see how the pace was. It wasn't really like coming in and winning it. It was just, yeah get some laps in and try some things with the setup. Well, you got a few laps in and did a, did a lot of, uh, did a great job battling a lot of experienced heads and a lot of people were caught out in that last race. So you weren't, you weren't alone in that one. So Dane gave a good shout out to your sponsors. Is there anyone you would like to include on the thanks? Yeah, probably just same with him. So old C sport, Logitech G, um, Astro gaming, modem simulation, cube controls and, confederation of australian motorsport camps all them guys for all the help and support so there we have it then jackson susan harlow picking up a third position and an on finish then for the night's worth of racing a very interesting night's worth of racing here at barber motorsports park the 6060 has probably been the most exciting and probably the most changing in terms of this racing but of course, we've got five straight weeks, and the next two coming up, Donington and Suzuka, always seem to bring the party as well. Anybody who is anybody can take it, can change it. Make sure that you watch it, because Parramatta Suzuki AOSC is literally, arguably, the best racing you will find on the planet at the moment. But that calls time on what we've seen here today at Barber Motorsports Park. Here at Alabama, the Crimson Tide have got themselves in. You can roll tide all you like, but ultimately here, with thanks, of course, to Parramatta, Suzu Ute, and West End Mazda, with Jay Kennedy behind the cameras, Ross Ruther to my right, and myself being Jake Sperry. Harley Haber picks up the win. Consistency again from Marlon McMullen. A non-finish that hurts like billy goats for Jordan Ross. The championship takes another dramatic turn as we head to Donington Park in a week's time. Everything is changing once again. And my goodness, you have to keep your eyes up here on the IRC Sports Network on SimSpeed TV because this is where everything seems to happen. We'll see you in one week's time. Fantastic. This is GT Racing right now. He's got traction. He got rid of oh. the outside of the Oh, oh he's taking Anderson. Oh. Anderson's up the hill. Oh, my God. Oh. What a big crash. Oh, my goodness. Oh, the field's going to get rolled. Six very close. These guys are one I want to make their way through the field very quickly. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's massive. This is it. This is over. I can't believe this. Oh, my oh, God. God, what?